everyone and welcome here to a brand new series because it's Halloween let's do something ghostly shall we I'm not entirely certain how to pronounce this one good here good as you I'm sure you'll correct me anyway this came up on the uh, Halloween sale and looked really really interesting uh, uh, those of my patrons who said something said I should play this one so here we go sound has a particular importance in Gurdjieff especially in certain puzzles for an optimal experience sit in a quiet and dark place and put on headphones yeah. right I can't see myself. There's no one here. Am I? No. This isn't right. Good. It seems I can still move. In a way. And I can also see things. But I can't feel anything. Stay calm. Something's wrong. Think, Abigail. I know this tree. I'm outside the manor. I just need to think. No. This is wrong. I need to find help. Help! Father! Mother! Annie! Okay, Abigail writes down all her thoughts in her journal. Each time the notebook icon appears, you can see her latest ideas regarding recent events. Perhaps they'll reveal some hints about her next goal. Just a thought. Gravestones. Have you ever seen a frivolous stone? Hmm? A light-hearted stone? I don't think so. Let's look at the journal. I'm Abigail Blackwood. In fact, I'm Abigail Blackwood, daughter of Abraham and Helena Blackwood, and Annie's sister. To be honest, that's all I remember after the fall. My final scream. I don't really understand what I am or what's happening. I need to find help. I need to find my family. Okay, so we have... What are these down here? Whatever they are, I can't click on them. Right, let's not worry about them. So... Boo! No? Okay. So we can look... Let's look. Abigail Blackwood? 1890 to 1902. Well, at least that makes things clear now. Okay, so... This is, this is a ghost of a young lady called Abigail. And... She died in 1902. That would have made her about 12 years old. And... For some reason... She's decided to haunt us all this night. Look at this tree. Let's do so. I like this tree. But my memories were a bit more impressive even in winter. It kind of hints that time has passed, really, hasn't it? So I wonder what time we are actually in now. Okay, same message. So we can go off that side. We can go off that side. Let's go off this side. Clues. By holding control, you can highlight every notable element of the scene. A magnifying glass will clear on every clickable object. Let's just do that. Yeah. Okay, so... Yeah, fairly obvious this time, but I'm sure it'll help us later on. So... Let's have a look at this. That's strange. There's a hexagonal shape carved out of the pedestal as if something has been taken out. I don't think I saw that before. Okay. So we need to find something hexagonal, presumably, to move on. Anything new here? Yes, our new control powers. Ah, we have a... This gate is closed and covered in rust. What's this do? How can I open it? Unless, maybe I could go through it. 
Let's not leave the area first. Let's go back here. Uh, oh, there was something. Yes, there was something. I remember the path of the village, but I'd rather stay here for now. I don't think I'm very presentable at the moment. Right, she doesn't want to go that way. So that leaves us with this way. Off you pop, me old ball of light. Blackwood Manor, just like my memories. I was born and died here. I remember this window. That's where I fell. It was cold. Poor girl. That's really quite sad, really, isn't it? Uh, press tab to open the map. Okay, so presumably we're here. Mm, big old place, isn't it? And it looks like there's extra pages to this, but we can't see them just yet. Okay. Right. Tree, window, door. Yep, obvious things. So let's have a quick look at the tree first. No leaves on the tree. We're still in winter, but I don't feel cold. Uh, this window. A light. Maybe there's someone there who can help me. Uh, how do I get in? Going through the gate was easy, but such an obstacle. Let's give it a try anyway. Go on. We have faith in you. Impossible. It's terrifying, but rather handy. Oh, this is more like it. Okay, things to look at. Let's start with that. The wallpaper wasn't torn before. This is Ward, but I never have allowed that. Am I really at the manor? Yes, lots of time has passed by the looks of it. The candles are lit. There must be someone around. Father usually works late at night. Yes, I don't think Father owns this place anymore. Ivy? Inside the manor? This is starting to look like a bad dream. Okay, and what have we got here then? Who could have drawn this map? The names remind me of Father's studies, but he'd never have taken these documents out of his office. Uh, can we take it? Yes, we can. There we go. So... Fields of stone, eldritch, eldritch forest. Which, according to Terry Pratchett, eldritch means oblong. So, oh, interesting. Okay, so if we follow the hall along here, by the looks of it, we will end up at the office. And I think that actually looks like a good place to start. Okay. Codex. Every note, journal, book and poster you read is stored in the codex. No need to retrace your steps. Everything's here. Press C to open the codex. Okay, so there's the map. And what well, we can click on these now, there's still nothing in them. Okay. Right. Alrighty, so what else have we done? Um, look at the stairs. These stairs aren't quite as impressive as I remember. They're covered in dust. Even this vase wasn't quite a dull looking before. Is my mind playing tricks on me? Okay, so let's scroll across here. We've got some new stuff to look at here. Damaged tableware. The manor seems abandoned. I don't understand. My grandparents used to hunt deer in the woods of the manor grounds. Good evening, Jack, Rufus, Ted, Molly. Yes, it would have been creepy if they'd replied, wouldn't it? And off we go. Oh, this place isn't disrespair, isn't it? Everything's so dilapidated. Someone's drawn some symbols here. Does this have to do with demonology? My father studies. I can't work out which demons these symbols represent. I really need help. Okay, can we... No, we can't do anything with them. We just know they're there. Alright. I don't recognise this chair. 
Chair, who are you? Identify yourself at once. A small part of grandfather's mineral collection. He must have been fantastic at parties. These sheets seem to be folded neatly. Someone still cares about these things. Okay. A view of the matter of the fog. Something about this painting troubles me, but I can't tell what. This couch seems comfortable enough to rest, if only I could. Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. Something's written at the margin. Property of Alexander Hodgkin. That name is new to me. Father's office. His safe haven. The place where he did all his experiments, esoteric or otherwise. I like this place. If father's at the manor, this is where I'll find him. But can people see me? I won't be able to talk. And what will he, he do if he somehow recognises me? Everything is so inconsistent, different, but so, so similar. Maybe I should go find more hints about what's going on before I see him. Nah, let's go through there. No, not letting us. Okay. Right, well, if we can't go... Whoop, sorry. If we can't go that way, let's go this way. Um... Ah! <laughs> oh, where's that effect? Ellipsis! Seriously not impressed. Okay, fine. Let's go through here. What have we got here? Alright. It doesn't look like any of the clocks in the manor are working, but I'm not particularly worried about that right now. For me, it's always... Ooh, what's that? These wills clearly don't want anything to go through them. Is there a way through? Okay. But... Well, looks like I can go through there, perhaps. Can I? Uh, okay, we'll have a look at that later on. There's plenty more to look at first. Alice in Wonderland? What's they doing in Mother's Library? There's a note hidden between the pages. The handwriting's rather clumsy and it doesn't look much different from mine. It must have been written by a child. Edward. Alexander and I sneaked into Father's laboratory and we found something interesting. There's this weird powder. I will show you how it reveals hidden writings. Know this. You have to pour the powder on pages to reveal the ink. Alexander told me to keep some of it. Now we can have there. We can start start writing coded messages. R. Okay. That's interesting. What else we got here? Mother's favorite game. Okay, so it looks like this is the this is, a, is the starting of a language, isn't it? So, well, we don't know start anything yet, but we have some information. So let's keep hold of it and see what we can do with it. So, I'm willing to bet the blue ones will allow us through, but the yellow ones won't. Is there anything more here? Oh, I missed. Books on botany and chemistry. Nothing I need right now. There's all kinds of jars here, but nothing will help me understand what's going on here. 
I have never seen this dresser open. I think father was hiding important documents inside. I can't open it. One of father's most disconcerting hobbies, collecting keys, for which there is no keyhole. Why would he hide the Virgin Mary behind lock and key? Abigail just possessed an object. She's now able to move it or combine it with another. On the other hand, as an object, Abigail gains a foothold into the world of the living and has to accept its rules. No object can cross a wall. Right click to leave the object. Well, I don't think we actually need the object. We just need the object moved. There we go, because there's something here. I really want to know what the switch is for. So do I. Let's find out. Something important was hidden in this cupboard. Let's find out, shall we? Some accounting, invoices, deeds of property. And what's this? Death certificate. Name and surname. That's her death certificate, isn't it? Very badly drawn. I can't make it out too well. No, that's her father's death certificate. Male, 76 years old, professor of something or other, died of lung cancer. Death certificate with father's name on it? That's impossible. I can't believe it. He was 76? But how? What happened to me? What about mother and Annie? 1939. My last memories date back to 1902. This must be a bad dream. So much of this doesn't make any sense. I need to understand what's going on. Father's office. He must have taken notes. Maybe his research can help me. Okay, so, well, we now have a, a better idea of the time. Um, it's at least 1939, probably much, much later. I never really liked newspapers. Wait, 2nd of February 1941? No! That can't. It's been 40, no, 39 years. That's impossible. This is a nightmare. Right, so, yep, we are advancing time even further. But there's live plants here, so there must be somebody around. These don't look like mother's plants. You always liked flowers better. Someone's been looking after them, though. Yes, that's what I'm thinking, too. Different plants, different books. Something is going on here. Yeah, right. Can I go through that? These walls clearly don't want anything going through them. Is there a way to get through? Okay, so, right, the blue ones will stop us at, uh, at this moment as well. Okay, so... Let's find Daddy's office, shall we? Down we go. Right, we've been in here, so what we need now to do is move on. Plenty of stuff here to look at. These books, they seem important and they're well worn. Have you ever heard the story of Icarus who flew too close to the sun? Let me tell you one version of that ancient story. A man who thought himself a great alchemist and master of the elements of nature found an old forgotten grimoire that would teach him to summon demons and command them to carry out whatever he wanted. Now, this man gained his power by following the lead of those before him. That is to say, he had used the results from experiments performed by the other masters to appear wise to those around him. However, while he was good at applying that which he'd learned from others, his ability to think on his own and to reason was lacking. This man loved a woman who he'd never spoken to. 
He watched her from afar, admiring her beauty and dreaming of what it would be like if she was his wife. He spent so much time in the world of fantasy where she was his, that his obsession started to take a toll on him. He couldn't sleep, eat, and became isolated from his friends. The directions in the book were clearly laid out, and because of his adaptness in following instructions in his alchemical manuals, he thought that he would master demons as quickly as he mastered alchemy. Out of desperation for this woman, he summoned a demon named Beleth, who it was said could create love between man and a woman. Sensing his desperation, the demon came to his summons, and the man was sure that it was his skill that brought Beleth to him so quickly. He commanded the demon to bring his love to him with haste and without harm befalling her. The demon laughed, saying it was an easy task, as the woman felt the same way as the man, but he would require but a single action from the man to ensure success. Ecstatic, the man agreed to do whatever Beleth needed to accomplish the task. The demon dictated a love letter to him, telling him to send it to his love on a specific date using the exact words he gave him. After the man dismissed the demon, he immediately wrote the letter that Beleth had dictated to him, word for word, and set it aside, waiting for the appointed day to mail his note. When the day came to mail the letter, his love went to a spiritualist to speak to her beloved mother, who had passed when she was young. When the medium told the spirit of her mother, Beleth came in disguise and told her of the letter she would receive. He told her that the man who wrote it was a necromancer and meant to do her family harm. Knowing exactly what the man had written, Beleth easily scared off the man's love and destroyed his reputation in the process. Just like Icarus, his overconfidence had destroyed him. However, we can learn one more lesson. Without the ability to reason, to create, to innovate, a master is not a master. Never take what you read or see at face value. And that includes anything and everything that I write you. Oh, lovely. I think I'm going to really enjoy this, to be honest with you. And we'll play this through for a few uh, weeks, see how we go. And if you guys like it, uh, perhaps I'll do some more. But I think we're done for now. So, until the next time, I've been Simon Parsons. This has been the ghost of Abigail Blackwood. Thank you, and good night.